Hello, my name is Suvin Kim, and I'm Artistic Director of Chamber Music Northwest. Welcome to our Masterclass series. For more than two decades, Jason Vio has been considered to be among the few greatest classical guitarists in the world. He's also one of the most sought after teachers, and he serves on the distinguished faculties of the Cleveland and the Curtis Institutes of Music. I consider it one of the great privileges of my musical life to count Jason as a musical partner and friend. And Chamber Music Northwest is very happy to share with you the artistry and teaching of guitarist Jason Vio. Good, good, good. So we'll, uh, yeah, I want to try to tune up a little. Good. Good. So um, let's just go. Let's go through it a bit. I think. Um, I like that there's a there's a nice kind of rhythmic lilt that you have during the ritmico parts, which is really good. So you don't you don't always play, you know, one and a two e and a one. You kind of or one and a two and a one and a two. Literally, you kind of have this nice. There's this nice kind of Spanish lilt to the rhythm where it goes one and a two and a three, which is something you can't really notate. <clears throat> it's kind of in between thirty seconds and sixteenths. So I I thought that was very nice. Um, but what I'd like to first do is then, as far as working on um, things in, involving your guitar playing, would has more to do with maybe sound. <laughs> and I, but in order to do that, I think we have to we have to think about we have to try. Play a little bit slower. The first thing I'd like to do is just actually play, if you don't mind, yeah. just sort of switch guitars, um, just so I can get a sense of what the what your guitar does and what it doesn't do. Every guitar does this, and then it doesn't do this. You know, there's always a trade-off. Right on the 
strings? Yeah, smart. Yeah. Or for free stroke. That even in piano, you actually there is a difference then coming out of the guitar then from that. So let's let's go work slowly though on that. So you want to make sure you don't lose your sound. All right, let's play that slowly like. Um, slurs or or you can do that as Scovia's finger that's the really good fingering right and then, but that when after this this really pretty The, the kind of macho Spanish kind of character. And then this is like or, orchestra, you know, the, it's very orchestral, the piece. So this could be like low brass. And that, that could be like some winds or something like that kind of playing off in the background. And I think it's important to think about those things because Torina. Uh, was not, not only, I, I, I'm pretty sure he's a pianist, he wasn't a guitarist. So when they're writing for the guitar and they're writing for Segovia, probably we have to assume that one of the things that's in their mind when they're writing a guitar piece is that, oh, like the famous Segovia quote, like the guitar is like a miniature orchestra. That's why a lot of the Segovia repertoire has so much orchestral uh, color to it. And that's where the sound thing comes in. The sound has to actually be the vehicle, you know, to, to, to do that. So we have to identify what the character, we have to think about what the character of certain things are, the color along the string that we assign to them, the angle of attack, and this kind of thing. So I, th I think that traditionally this is played pretty full, right? Mm -hmm. like, uh, we can go a little slower. I would play all these slurs, but are you doing this here? Um, you're doing, and you're replucking it. I'm replucking. Yeah, it's probably it's gonna. Be fine. Are you Roscoe? Yeah. Something like that. But, uh, yeah, I know. Some, <laughs> I've, I've noticed with my own students, some do it and they some, some don't. Let's pretend we're, for now that we're not going to do it. Right? So this, you have to make, you can play softly at the beginning, but then it's got to have, really have direction back toward the full orchestra. Maybe the, maybe the percussionist is playing castanets or something. I don't know, right? But we have to kind of imagine something, yeah. right? That, that we're trying to sort of achieve on the guitar, right? And that's kind of one of the first things I start with, of course, with the fingerings, what the fingerings are going to be, rhythms, um, dynamics, and that kind of thing. So let's just go slowly and try to sort of create something really happening with that. You know? mm. yeah. Yep. 
have a do but you have to stay. You have to stay. It still has to be forte, forte. Right. Okay. Now this is an interpretation thing. You're making that more of a gesture, and I I believe that is still rhythmical, mm -hmm. meaning in time and rhythm. So that that we get like. A, You're doing that one? See, and then this is something else. He's, this is something else. Mm -hmm. Different different section of the orchestra, you know? Maybe maybe it's flute, you know, or, or, or something like that. Maybe it's, you know, maybe it's the violin section. I don't know. Me, meaning I'm just, I'm sort of using my imagination. <laughs> That's low brass or something, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So we have to kind of make all these these things happen. Mm -hmm. try, so let's try that one more time. Again, kind of under tempo, so you can kind of kind of think it through while you're playing. Dun, 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 dun. Let's even go like something like that. Uh, from, uh, the from the beginning. Okay. Pizzicato on the guitar is kind of a thing, and it often ends up sounding like this, which is which means barely audible to the to the to the audience. I actually use the 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 bone, the this knuckle on my on my uh, thumb, and I get asked about it all the time by guitar by guitarists like, how are you getting that sound? You know? If you can kind of pluck the string with this bone here, that, that or wherever, whatever that is, where the knuckle is, mm, kind of yeah. right there. It's yeah, it's where the it's where the joint is. It's kind of right right here. Right there. Something's going on there, but you have to kind of pluck with some force. It's gotta be there. You go. That's it. Segovia had that too. He could totally get that sound. Like, it was like, boom, boom, boom. Like, the whole top's moving on the guitar. It's awesome. It's not that you always have to play a lot, but it's got to... See, then, once they hear the first notes, then you can follow the diminuendo, right? Because now the, the big... Has decayed by the point by the time you get to that second measure of the pizzicatos, right. right? And then you come down, 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 and then that leads into, of course, that diminuendo leads into the really pretty, you know. I think Segovia did that on a recording when I heard it when I was a kid. Someone did. Ponticello, okay, good. So let's. That was okay. These two first two lines, though, are like it's so much better mm. because you're not just playing guitar now. Now you're kind of like really sort of making something happen with it. You're imagining what it what what it could sound like, and and I think again, I think the key thing is really thinking orchestral, like really thinking like that again. Segovia's direction I think to these to the these guys that didn't play guitar these composers that didn't play guitar was the guitar is like a miniature orchestra he was constantly saying it mm. and I um, and and Ponce you know again another one and Toraba they were really kind of trying to get at it because you know they, they would maybe write on the piano or, or or not but they couldn't they you know they couldn't play the guitar to, to really, f they couldn't sort of figure it out. The yeah. way that Villa Lobos could. So Villa Lobos' music is like, sort of like, it immediately playable on the guitar because he was actually not, not just a okay guitarist. Actually, he was like a really good guitarist. 
Um, and so he could he could write all these things and whatever he imagined, like he could, I mean, he could kind of make it happen. Um, so that's a different thing. That's why that stuff is so like immediately idiomatic, like mm. the preludes and even a lot of the etudes, right? Uh, Sweet popular Brazilian. Like, oh. So these are a little these are a little tougher, right? Like, these these kind of these left hand changes are all awkward, and they don't. There's there's a lot of things about it that even with Tor Torino, which I find I find his music more idiomatic to the guitar in a way than Torba even. Uh, it's still, it's still sort of, it's clunky. There's a lot of clunky things to it, right? As you have you discovered. So once again, let's go. <laughs> to be like to a to a click track or anything mm. like that but what i mean is that da 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 is a thing right right the rhythms are an actual thing <laughs> and if we don't give them the thing they're gonna go they're gonna be like what is that like i don't know what that i don't know what that's supposed to mean it right. just sounds random <laughs> right so yeah that was but this is such good playing right so it's i think do that once again from here and make it as beautiful as possible I'm losing it because I'm playing with the bar. No, no, no. Exactly. Here, please. Here, please. <laughs> That's kind of the end of the first major section, yeah. right? Good. Sorry, I, no, just, I'll just take the first major. Um, bum bum bum. Yeah. So. so you can even take time. You can even breathe in between each one, but don't breathe in between this and this because this is the winds or or, or trumpet to answer to the low brass. Then you can breathe between. And then, and then right away, start slowing down. Right? Because it's hard to get to. Right? That's what the pros do. Anything that's really hard to get to, they just kind of. They, they kind of retroactively kind of make something happen and mm -hmm. they, where they do it, you know, like uh, several of the greatest, I think the greatest players, my favorite players, like they do that really well. So, Actually. Yes, I, I like that as well. A lot of players hear that wrong. You gotta, you have to acknowledge the golpe 
Right. A lot of people hear this for some reason on, and I did it as a kid because all the recordings sounded like that. Because uh-huh. they would take a ton of time here, then they would golpe, then they would take more time, and then they go, ya na 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 So how am I supposed to hear it any other way than da na 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 Then that's the downbeat, right? Right. So, so again, when I actually studied this piece through students, I was like, oh my God, that's the rhythm of it? I didn't know. Like, because I never, because <laughs> you would always hear like... Right? Exactly. How is anybody going to hear it any other way that that's on the downbeat? Right. 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 So, yeah. so we, you and I, when we play this, we have to resolve to. Which is not easy. Right. <laughs> so you can do your, but you can do your golpe if you're going to do your golpe on the strings, which is like a string click. a move. This is what I sit doing all day is that kind of yeah. thing. Yeah, like make it like, and make it into a move and, and see that you can play it in a, in a pocket, what yeah. I call, you know, what we call sort of a, a, a thing. These are on the downbeat. Like, oh my God, it was like such a revelation like looking at it with a student I was like that's what the rhythm is I never knew you know I never knew Um, then you got this stuff where you got it down here you're gonna do that with a bar well yeah I was kind of stretching the time a little bit to sort of make up for that shift see that's but but I don't I think that doesn't but ideally though, though I don't think that sounds good right right yeah so What's another way to get down to the third position? I'm wondering if there's another way. We need to get here. Right. Like I don't know the piece that well. Like, but we. I all I know is like we need to get here. Yeah. <laughs> right. So we can go. This all stays in our in our orchestral kind of you know kind of thing in our in our pocket, right? Right. So that's um, one one, and you're doing it here. Well, the second time I right because you're because you're trying to get, you're trying to avoid the shifting. Can you do this? Zero, one three one three four one one two no do one three four yeah one three four no one three four three one that's it it's just a move try it again mm. keep, keep reading it fun but you get what I mean yeah. right like you gotta you gotta pretend like it's a part in a quartet or whatever and like I want to get you know, and don't don't save the three for later try to do this then you'll build up your dexterity with it mm-hmm. no, no no you're you're holding it down for later watch my third uh. watch my third Like a daily, and that's that's like a daily exercise. Everything from like, I can't tell you how many things in this piece I played today was became like these daily like daily exercises. Mm-hmm. And that's it's through learning the repertoire when you can say, oh, you know what, I'm not so good at that. I'll I'll put that into the the little library of my te- my technique library I'm on with the scales. <laughs> You put it in. You put it into this library of things, and through this piece, that this kind of dexterity kind of thing is going to get better. But 
in the piece, it's for this reason. I'm going to get there. There, now you have your two still there for ready for that. Have you used three, four? Ah. Yeah. No, not what I'd like to, now what I'm going to suggest. Now this will be end up actually being another. trying to you're trying to climb your your way like a ladder ladder your way down to third position mm. using the scale right uh, fingerings are unfortunately like a huge part of the the problem solving like the puzzle solving of of guitar playing it's an, you know unfortunately it just it just comes with the territory and if you can if you're a good puzzle solver problem solver you can you know you don't have to be beholden necessarily to the fingerings the fingerings from the particular player or editor are the ones that that player uh, you know just that's the one they like mm. you know Segovia was really a busy person that's this is a great thing to study is his fingerings because you get a real insight into his playing style but try to fashion something like that. Mm. Too bad there aren't any open strings, right? right. <laughs> I'm a big fan of those. But this is the goal of this. Right? Yeah. And you can end up open here, right? Yeah. Open string, right? And now I'm not saying that's the, the that's the it would be my solution. I would work with this and I <coughs> typically experiment when I'm learning a piece with anywhere from three to five different fingerings on a difficult passage actually the more difficult the passage is the more I'm going to be looking at a lot of different you know things for a while as long as I have time right. I like that one already yeah. it's starting out. because the scale's not that fast actually in in real time mm -hmm. you know, and then you're, so forth by the way or, you ever try that one for this yeah. right because then you don't have to be up here with this and then go right, right yeah right. again you're when you have melody notes, when you have melody notes alone, that's a golden opportunity to, yeah, to uh, ladder, you know, take, you know, ladder your way down or ladder your way up, the, uh, up the neck or down the neck to, you know, let's say there was any other fingering but this, right? Yeah. That's another thing. You know, that's another option, but but meaning we don't even right. finger and a nice little pause up here mm -hmm. hanging out for three notes yeah. so that's another thing I want to get across to you you have to ex don't be too like these have to be the fingerings and right. kind of thing. it's not <laughs> that what's most important what's most important is the music what's most important like we have melody we have harmony we have rhythm we have dynamics we have color we have to really make sure all of these things are, are, are happening mm -hmm. and if we're always kind of sort of in a way uh, the, the fingerings of a particular edition can be somewhat of like a prison because then you can't like if we don't if we can't imagine anything outside of that then it's hard to improve mm. right so one last thing only because we have a couple of minutes just a couple of minutes left is yeah. um, what kind of technical training uh, around the how, well actually how long have you been playing classical guitar um I'd say right around 
three years now. Just three years. Yeah. Okay. Well, the, actually, this piece is quite tough, actually, I think, for three years, yeah. actually. I mean, so there's that. But um, it's not – you have facility. I think that a lot of this is that you don't have enough technical training, actually, mm. is that that's what you're, you're, you need to be – you know, so you, I'm – you are, you know, doing a lots of scale, and, yeah. you know, free stroke and rest stroke and mm -hmm. that kind of thing, and arpeggiation yeah. and this sort of thing. Okay, good. Yeah. When that stuff really starts to catch up, and you're doing that, at, you know, an hour at least an hour a day. After you know, after about ten thousand hours of practice, um, which only takes really a certain number of years, then you can that that stuff really starts to be kind of like a and slurs too. Mm -hmm. That stuff starts to become, you know, really try to do as many slur etudes, slur exercises as you can do. The Giuliani, uh, Carcassi, uh, lots of soar uh, ones are really great for it too. Mm. Though this is a, this becomes like I have a backbone of that kind of stuff. Like right. it's, it's and that's like the central nervous system in mm. a way of my technique, and that, that everything kind of comes comes from that. So whenever I counter encounter any combination of scales slurs arpeggios because then you get with you get into a piece and now they're combined together yeah. or they're on top of each other yeah you need the fundamentals of that kind of stuff kind of from, you know like like sort of hot coals of like a bond bonfire or something like kind of coming from up from underneath yeah. uh, that that that's really powering that kind of thing. yeah okay good very good all right thank Sweet. you yeah, thank you mm -hmm. So Brandon is going to play the fugue uh, from the BWV 998 Prelude Fugue Allegro. We're really we're just going to probably work on the A section because it's a rather lengthy piece. this piece I know. So. Awesome. So let's try, let's just try it again and this time, yeah, go a little bit, I think go a little bit slower. Your, your tempo is pretty brisk actually. Mm -hmm. like, like, Pretty fast. 
that's what, especially when you start getting into the bass. So I would I would recommend just not really shooting f for th for that right now. Mm -hmm. the, the, I mean, so let's try it at a little bit slower tempo. The one you started with actually the first time you went through is this, mm -hmm. and I think that's a more reasonable tempo. That's what most. See if we can connect more of the notes within the same line, contrapuntal line, together legato. Mm -hmm. um, and then also when you have an opportunity to exploit, if you will, the melodic content, like... shapes and this kind of thing mm -hmm. to me like it's kind of that or 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 nothing it's our our bust mm -hmm. if you if we're not really kind of making music out of out of the lines that are that are there because uh, everything is melody that's the whole thing with the the baroque practice of of uh, fugal counterpoint and all that is that you know in a way in a very like maybe oversimplified way like all all the voices are actually carrying not just you know the subject material, but they're 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 perpetually melodic mm -hmm. the whole time. So we have to kind of find those opportunities. Let's just play like a little bit together. I'll, I'll start with you. you know, so here we go. One and one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's an eight note subject. I like going to this note because it's higher than the others. Mm -hmm. you know. on two lines with two lines mm -hmm. so let's try that much right there in the the very start yeah mm -hmm. good that's really nice can you now can you do that free stroke because you're not going to be able to play rest stroke mm -hmm. now okay 
if you play it, I, I'm not. I'm not saying don't play it rust stroke because you you can't play the rest of the piece free stroke. What I'm saying is that let's you you should know for yourself that you should that you can also play a free stroke that way mm -hmm. like that. So because that's what the whole thing is is just shaping the lines and connecting you know connecting notes within the same line uh, with within themselves. So. Mm -hmm. do the same thing again. Don't come down yet here. practice it but I think that's a more I think that's a more reliable plan for you right now at your current playing level mm -hmm. because I mean I've you know, I need to do this like it's, it's still here the E mm -hmm. you know, is, is really I mean it's really really difficult yeah so the and, and that's another thing about playing fugues on the guitar you have to give up something you're, you're not you can't have every, you can't have everything right mm -hmm. so you have to be able to give up you know, this for this, and it's a lot of compromises. And then what you're trying to do over time is to create this kind of, this picture where it's it's sort of like a sleight of ear thing. Like you're trying to convince, you know, the aggregate picture is meant to uh, convince the listener that they're hearing something that's actually not really there all the time. It's, you know, mm -hmm. that's kind of the idea of it. So it's, it's a lot of making choices. Try to keep fingers off of bars, away from bars as much as possible. Ringing strings over each other occasionally like that, not a big deal. We don't have to damp and, and like, you know, this, I think, all right, that is fine right now. Like, see, I, when I'm practicing this piece regularly, I go, I'll rest stroke lightly the G to knock out the C sharp mm -hmm. because the C sharp and the G are on the same line, the same soprano line. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. yeah, so yeah. I don't think it's that important though, right? So watch my right hand. Right, I'll do that. When I'm playing this in concerts and I prepare it, then it's, I do this. Mm -hmm. I don't, I think it's okay. Same thing with this. Mm. I just use a rest stroke. I use a rest stroke, a light rest stroke. Da -da. Because mm -hmm. the B and the E are the same stem yep. up line. Mm -hmm. right? cool. So. So now let's just work with that. Are you doing it with M or A? It doesn't matter. much better listen listen how you were going from maximum legato when you practice you want as much legato as you can get
forget your stem down line too. shifts have to be super like light light and easy right? mm -hmm. so um, one more time it's getting better okay now i'm hearing preparation in the right hand i'm hearing this i'm going to exaggerate you're I'm, I'm exaggerating so it's not this bad but i'm here watch my right hand i'm hearing this Don't do that. <laughs> if you want to advance, if you want your, if you want to invest in your right hand, in, in in as a player, you have to get you have to get that stuff out of the right hand, or the or no matter what or no matter what you do in your left hand, it'll never be legato because mm -hmm. the right hand will always be planting all the time. So so both hands have to be synchronized, like all the. You know, like, we don't want to play like this, right? Because yeah, yeah. it's inefficient. But like, this is kind of like a good little exercise <laughs> to see if, because <laughs> you're just trying to sweep the string. You don't want to stop at the string before every time, every note you play, because then it's going dot, dot, dee, dot, dot, like that. <laughs> so <laughs> let's try. <laughs> now we'll watch right. <laughs> Every teacher is going to be like, what are you doing? Jason, you never told me to do that. <laughs> no. Yeah, next time you see me. Right. <laughs> no, I mean, meaning like that's that's not what I, yeah. that's, I'm saying don't, but sometimes actually that's a good kind of thing to get you out of the whole thing of like, mm -hmm. you know, of what you, the, the rut that you're stuck in and playing right hand strokes. Mm -hmm. Like you have a lot of planting in the right. Mm -hmm. Embedded in your playing. Yeah. How long have you been playing classical guitar? This, I, so I started by playing jazz, and then uh -huh. like a few years into college, I switched over to classical. Okay. Um, so it's been, I think, six years. Six like years that. on yeah. cla uh, playing classical guitar. But how many? Okay, but but then you're still studying jazz as well at the same time, or a you... little bit now. I'm playing. I injured myself for a while, so now I'm coming back after about two years of on and off playing. You injured um, your right hand? Both of my hands, tendonitis. Oh. Um, yeah, it's, but it's it's all right now. Okay, yeah. good, good. Um, but I've played since I was six, so it's been about 19 years. Um, but classical was the later development for me. Right, a later development. Yeah, so that's the thing. I mean, a lot of a lot of the early training will traditionally will tell us to tell and the teacher uh, as well in pedagogy to tell the teacher to tell the student to have, make sure that they're make sure that they're they're fingertip is on the string before every stroke and that they feel the string and this kind of thing but often and that's fine like for a player the first two years but then you have to get it out of their playing because then they just they play like that and then they're playing something like this mm. and you can't play pieces like this mm -hmm. or that it just doesn't work or, or anything or make a legato line or something like that this is even just playing like a rest stroke scale like, you know you can't I mean, that's a nice sound. It's mm -hmm. a detaché sound. All that is is just preparing each stroke. Mm -hmm. But if you want to go, mm -hmm. you know, you can't you you can't prepare each stroke. They just have to kind of glide along the string. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I was just. That was, I was just making something up. I mean, mm -hmm. I, um, you know, whatever, whatever it is. I mean, mm -hmm. like, uh, you know, something like that or whatever. Like if you, I mean, you're a jazz guitarist. I mean, and, and I can improvise a little bit. I'm not mm -hmm. a professional jazz musician, but like I can, play over charts and stuff like that mm -hmm. you know if i'm you know if i want something to be legato i can i can do that if i wish or if i want something to be staccato 
Now, the thing is also the jazz training teaches you guys to play a lot of stick, so sort of detache. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's hip. I mean, mm -hmm. that's what, that's kind of like what the sound is. It's mm -hmm. like, I'm, I'm a huge jazz hound since I was three years old. So, so I know the sound that like the, you know, you know, Kurt Rosenwinkel's playing mm -hmm. and, the, you know, all, the, all the, the, the newer players and the older ones and Wes and Jim Hall and that kind of thing. But this is, of course, as you now, as you soon realize, is a completely different aesthetic in classical yeah. part we like playing. It's like legato is kind of like a big deal, mm -hmm. you know. So because we're trying to now shape lines, in a way, we're trying to take the guitar and make it sound like it's something that it's not. In a way, we're trying to make we're trying to <clears throat> when you have when you have uh, you know music that involves um, long breathe lines like things that are sung. Uh, we're, we're basically trying to imitate singers or bowed instruments mm -hmm. or like, you know, the wind instruments and this kind of thing, things that sustain, even though our instrument doesn't have any sustain yeah. on it at all. After the note decays, as soon as, as soon as we pluck it, that's it, right? But you can, but again, the sleight of hand thing, or should I, I should say sleight of ear, If I, if I make dynamic phrasing too in the middle of it and play legato mm -hmm. and I got my hands in order it's all three of those things kind of have to have to happen when you're doing when you're dealing with polyphonic playing yeah. see how that bottom line mm -hmm. Answered in the top line. Right, all this mm -hmm. kind of stuff. So it takes an incredible amount of work and, and of course, the fundamental training to, mm -hmm. to do that too. So, do you do, uh, do you regularly work on scales and arpeggios and stuff like that? Yes, I was and... doing that for a while, sort of while my hands were recovering, just working on technique. Well, sure. um, but now I've been sort of more on repertoire, so I've been neglecting a bit of that, mm -hmm. which maybe is why some of this is showing up too. Right. Are you comfortable with me asking when your tendonitis went away? Um, when I completely stopped playing. It took about three months of not playing and then small amounts. But I mean, it will still flare up sometimes if I play too much. Mm -hmm. um, so how many, how many hours of guitar would you say that you play a day? Well, when it happened, I was playing like eight. Um, oh. Which is, okay. you know, why it happened now. Uh, not so much. Probably like two to four. Okay. You've been playing six years. Yeah. I would say that this piece is probably not the best choice. I don't know if your uh, did you cho choose it or your teacher chose it? Or? Um, I am working on this um, and like, so. R I Rogue. <laughs> no, I'm working on it with my teacher. <laughs> oh, okay. um, Cameron O'Connor is my teacher. I'm not sure if you know him. Um, he's a younger guy, but uh, we've been working on this for a bit, um, and I just thought it would be a good place to meet with you um, right. because the repertoire overlaps, but I've been playing a lot of new music, um, mm -hmm. so I have other repertoire, um, and I also write, uh, but yeah, but this what is other, pretty What new. other pieces have you studied before this one? That's what I'm wondering. Oh, what other repertoire? Um, so, I mean, right now, uh, I have a, a bunch of new music, actually, that I'm playing. Um, like Portland uh, composers. Oh, local meaning, yeah, contemporary stuff. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I'm trying to think like, uh, like I'm working on the Tedesco Sonata right now as well, which is a big one. Yeah. Oh no, that's I would say no to that one if I was your teacher. There's mm -hmm. no way. There, no. I mean, you're just asking. I mean, especially coming from tendonitis. That's your. That's not. That's just asking for trouble yeah. in my opinion yeah no it's too that's one of the most difficult pieces in the repertoire mm -hmm. so yeah no I, um what else that i'm playing right now no i mean that you've studied before this point of your the six years it's just a kind of yeah. a cross section of, of yeah music. um well i have played a lot of modern music uh, do you know mark uh, pazetsny I know the name. Yeah, I've played um, a suite that he played for Alexander Tonsman. Standard, um, standard repertoire pieces is what I'm asking about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I'm trying. Not, not much. I, I have like I've played some other Bach. I'm just like blanking on some of the names right oh, now. Oh, okay. Um, or trying to recall what I've played because there was a big gap where I wasn't playing. 
Um, Do you know the th- well, the one on the prelude I played tonight? Like, why not study that? That would be why, great. Why yeah. not study like the first cello suite? I mean, that wonderful. was when I was. A, I mean, when I was a freshman at Cleveland Institute of Music, studying with John Holmquist, I had like seventy-five pieces in my repertoire, and he, and I was like, I want to play one of the lute suites, and he's like. You're going to play the first cello suite and you're going to learn how to control your right hand and control your left hand and control your sound and control your technique and and learn about, you know, posture and all this Mm -hmm. kind of stuff and, 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 and be able to play like a line and this kind Mm -hmm. of thing. Cause I was just like attacking, you know, I was Mm -hmm. kind of like attacking the guitar. And so that honestly would be like my, that would be my recommendation actually. I like that. Cause I think this is, the thing is, this is like a 10 year piece when the student has been developed to a point where they can actually meet it at mm-hmm. that point. And I'm not saying this to, to, to denigrate no. you or anything. I'm just saying the playing, your playing level and especially within the, also within the context of an injury is not the best choice yeah. because there's so much, if it was in both hands, like all this kind of business of this. And when you get into the B section and all this, the, like, you know, like stuff like that. thinking of it I've played this piece probably a hundred times in a hundred concerts over the last 20 years and even just thinking of that now it's just like what we're asked to do as homo sapiens on this piece is absolutely like superhuman Mm -hmm. like it's crazy so I would say like that yeah something like that like Castle Tedesco Sonata it's just not you're not you're not helping you to you know to improve by doing that so I would have a, you know, I would try to, you know, I would really sort of think think about that going going forward. Yeah. So, and that's, and why, what sort of brought me to that was the fact that it's like you're still preparing your right hand strokes. Mm-hmm. So, you have and to study some intermediate level pieces where you get that out of your playing. Yeah, it's yeah. funny because it wasn't that way before. I wasn't doing so much preparation. And then I worked on a lot of preparation. So, I wonder, I mean, like... What would happen if I just try and not play in that that way? Like, well, and then also a lot of newer music also has like like intense articulations and stuff like this. Like like the third movement of the thing today, mm-hmm. yeah, that's like a lot of like stopping and stopping with my right hand, which really honestly at my age like it really tires my right hand out. So I have to spend longer amounts of time actually preparing it in a relaxed manner mm-hmm. at super slow tempos. Right, and like varied articulation, in order to not wear my right hand out. Right, so and that's like a, a professional player. Mm-hmm. Right, so I would, yeah, I would, I would try to, I would actually think about having uh, a goals of like a few pieces. Things like Fernando Soar and those, um, yeah, and uh, you know, collections. Not, not, not the concert. Not the not the concert brillante pieces like opus nine variation you know mozart variations or anything like that i mean like they're all of his best pieces are actually in those collections like um opus 35 yeah yeah those things those are where all the really the gems are actually they're like his kind of like sort of mozartian if you will kind of moments and and those will really show you how to play counterpoint in Mm -hmm. a way like they'll really kind of It'll be like you'll have to actually deal with playing counterpoint, but not at this level. Like this is like an ins- you know that that level is kind of insane. Yeah, so, especially if I'm not like actively playing the sort of supplemental yeah. material. So. And Carcassi etudes are great, and also the because they're not easy. I don't think the Carcassi progressive studies are easy, very easy at all. I mean, really. Uh, to achieve what musically needs to be done with them, Giuliani has a lot of kind of things. There's, but there's also a lot of um, there's also a lot of modern and contemporary repertoire that one can do, like the Brower uh, Tres Apuntes, for for example. Mm-hmm. Do you know this piece? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Tres Apuntes is another one that like where you it gives you an opportunity to actually deal with playing super legato and detache, like slightly detached and super staccato all in one piece that's like three short movements and that kind of thing and that that was i'm very thankful to my teacher uh, john holmquist for that because that he he's he's like slow down <laughs> like like you've gotta like 
just let me, you know, we'll just go right here and we're going to start with this and this kind of thing or whatever because I had like all this facility and, and you know, but it's, I, 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 if I'm, you know, feel part of me because I'm, I get very, you know, passionate about this kind of thing sometimes. I just don't want to, you know, just, you know, I want you to kind of feel like you're really progressing. And I think, you know, that's a very important thing from the teacher's perspective that for the student there the, is to really kind of sort of pick the right repertoire for them so that like, like a, like a plant or a flower, like it can really, really grow, you know, that type of thing. It's like a prune, mm -hmm. pruning bushes or something like that, now allowing them to get overgrown too much, you know? Yeah, absolutely. So, okay, good. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, thanks so much. <laughs> nice meeting you. Yeah, it's nice to meet you.